This next drill I'm going to show you is actually named after my wife. We call it the Liz drill. And what happened one day was we were playing a match and we got beat on a number of tips. And I came home to my wife waiting for me in the dark, upset with me about our team's inability to get a ball. And I informed our group that they'd really help my marriage if we could improve upon this skill. And so from this point forth, we created a drill and we named it after her. And so the Liz drill, the focus is that we have a full defense in play. We have our coaches attacking, though you can also have your players attacking. And our coaches are mixing in many, many tips, hits, tips, and they're doing it at a very random order. What this forces our defense to do is now read a setter, read an attacker, look at her attack elbow, and try to decide what play is coming. So the way that we do this, we have our three back row players who are defending as normal, and we have our three front row players who are actually not jumping. So they can make block moves to practice, or they can make defensive moves so we can train an off blocker defender at the same time. Since we want something for our middles to do during this time, what we ask our middles to do is just work on making block reads and going to the ball, though she is not allowed to play. So if, attack, if an attack is happening over here, come, come block please. If an attack is happening over here, we're pretending that these two cannot take the ball because they are potentially blocking, and we set up a defense behind them. The way this drill works is we give them one minute to control five balls. Three balls will be entered rapid fire. Coaches are attacking. We have one minute to make five plays that we control. When you're first doing this drill, perhaps you do it where any five touches will do. And as you get pretty good, we're going to say we have to properly control five different attacks. So here we go. We're going to see if they can control five balls. As we do this, our players must learn to read a setter to understand what options are available. They then have, there's one right there. They then have to control the attack. There's two. And make a good defensive read. They have three. And when coaches or your own team make hitting errors, we just add a little bit of time. There's four. There's number five. The team got it. Let's get five new people on the floor. Go. As we do this, I'd like to tell you about the no-go rule. We have a rule in our gym that if anyone doesn't pursue a ball, they forfeit all of their points. There's one. So if there's a ball that they don't pursue in this game, their count goes back to zero, or they forfeit their right to play. There's two. In any competitive game that we play, if a ball is not pursued, that team forfeits every one of their points. So if the game happened to be, they've got three. If the game happened to be 24 to 21, and they didn't pursue a ball, the score goes to 24 to zero. Not controlled, it doesn't count. They have three digs, they have 18 seconds to make the play. We'll add some time. They have five seconds to make two plays. There's four, but they didn't get it. Next group comes in.